just going to get more mid-ranging here. Um, I'm going to read through some of the things. We have mostly one ofs Chandra, Torch of Defiance, Liliana, Death's Majesty, Angrath, Demon Lord, Bells and Lock, Crook of Condemnation, Argwell's Bloodfast, Doomfalls, Cast Down, Chandra's Defeat. How much of this, how big can he go here? I like most of these planeswalkers. Angrath is, it figures to be pretty reasonable in a matchup where your opponent's on the slow side. Making them discard cards can be pretty profitable. Chandra lines up pretty well against yeah. a lot of what's going on here, so that one's pretty good. And Liliana just generates a good amount of value. It can block the stuff on the ground. It can bring creatures back. I, I'm, I'm actually really into this Demon Lord Bells and Lock. That sounds good. Now, here's an interesting one. If Ian doesn't prob may not know that Hoshide is a solid mid-range deck, but if he figures that out, if he noticed, hey, there were no Skull Scar Mages, there were no Earthshaker Kenras, there were no Bomat Couriers, Ian's sideboard starts with a whopping four Carnage Tyrants. That's a that's, lot. That's a huge number of that card, and I have no clue how Oshide's deck beats one Carnage Tyrant. Uh, it doesn't. I mean, erases it, erases <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, right, erasing is really the only way to do it. Like, if Ian's brought in all, like, all four, he could just, he could blow this game out of the water. That's a large creature. Yeah. And then players are trading land drops right now. Servant to the Conduit, the mana acceleration for Ian. See if, if Hoshide has an answer. He does the copy of Cast Down. Yeah, that was good to have because Servant actually gives Flynn an advantage. That, that's the only card in the matchup yeah. that either player has that accelerates mana, and they're both trying to cast four and more mana spells. Yeah, this is just, a, you mean in a straight mid-range mirror, yeah, that far seek effect is great. Yep. You see Hoshide answers with Chain Whirler, first play. That one's good in any mid-range mirror. Struggle, cast on the Whirler, it will hit the graveyard before it gets in an attack. And now we'll see Karn. See whether he wants to make a construct. He'll go top two cards. Scrap Heap Scrounger or Rekindling Phoenix? Ian has the choice. He'll hand the Scrounger over, but six loyalty. Karn is not going to go anywhere. He likes to hang around for a while. Very loyal. <laughs> Thrashing Brontodon from Ian Flynn. Four copies of it in his sideboard. At least one brought in now. That card lines up very well against Scrap Heap Scrounger. Yeah, it makes sense why he would then hand over the Scrounger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this 3-4 body, this card is actually just fine as a creature to cast. This matchup for it doesn't do as much, um, but it lines up really well against many of the red decks creatures, the various types of red decks. And it's really nice against blue-white. Taking care of. He just doesn't scatter it, no worries. <laughs> That's true. It's really Clean less, answer, boom, it's did it. It's less good when they counterspell it. And Hoshide takes back the Phoenix, then plays Chandra. Chandra is going to go ahead and shoot down the Brontodon. And now Nonari has two different Planeswalkers. He, he, is, he is cruising at the moment. And for Flynn, no land five, just another Brontodon. Ryan, he had a Glorybringer in hand. It felt like that land drop miss was huge. Yeah, the uh, removal spell on the Servant was huge. Missing the land drop there is going to tie this stuff in Flynn's hand. And Karn just goes back to drawing cards. Swamp, Spire of Industry. It doesn't really matter. You know, take a land. Give him the Swamp, I suppose. But yeah. Theoretically, Hoshide could be off color. <laughs> once, once you have a Spire there, it suggests that you're really reaching for dual lands. And then here's that Rekindling Phoenix that was picked up. Plus on the Chandra, it plays really that Rekindling Phoenix and Heart of Kiran. Oh, the Chandra's plus to actually to make mana to make both these cards. Yep. Yeah. That was the Phoenix that Oshide picked up last round of the car, and I actually really like that. It was an empty board. Yeah. He knew he had a good one under it. There's no real reason to dig for more random stuff. You know you're going to get the Phoenix anyway, and maybe your Karn might, yeah. might be hit by something. And again, there's just trades, and Hoshide continues to develop his board. Now, Ian did hit land five this time, but it's tapped, so still no Glorybringer. And he has to abrade and survive away the Rekindling Phoenix. It's not pretty. It'll get it done for now. But again, it's a trade of turns, and Ian loses the trade. We keep seeing they trade cards, and Hoshide has something left over. A Chandra on one, a Karn, a 0-1. It's not much, but 
that could come up. Yeah, so they survive. That That's a good exchange for Flynn, but he's still just down two Planeswalkers. This is a three-on-one game. And going into this turn, Chandra's going to plus. Going forward, there'll be another minus three yeah. on the table if Hoshide needs it. Yeah, Hoshide's drawing three cards a turn right now, and that's just, if he needs to win, that's just going to be too much. Yes. And... Heart of Kiran. It's going to be the play from Chandra. That one's off the top of his deck from thanks to the Chandra Torch of Defiance. The Karn, it's time to start making some constructs. Once you have one other artifact, minus two to make a 2-2 two -two is pretty reasonable. Then going forward, the constructs you make are even bigger. And Rekindling Phoenix is the play. Now, Ryan, how this works with the Elemental Token is actually... This, because there's still that one token left over from Struggle to Survive, if this Phoenix dies, it can trigger either, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, uh, it just just names a card Rekindling Phoenix there. Right, so if this, yeah, so it, it, this is going to make it much harder for Ian to get rid of. Yes. He'll make another Brontodon, but there's just so much stuff here on, on the other side. Sure, another struggle to survive in Ian's side, but grip. But there's just too many cards. This Karn has really felt like the story of yes. the game. When you're playing red green, you don't really have much in the way of clean answers to planeswalkers. The best thing you could yeah. theoretically have is not in the deck list, but a sorceress spyglass or two would be very beneficial here. But if you're behind on the battlefield, you're just going to stay behind in games like this. Yeah, every once in a while, green gets a bramble crush style effect, <laughs> um, which is usually too expensive to be playable at this in Constructed, and this is no different. Red and green, it's, it's damage or bust, and with a Karn, a Planeswalker who can go up to six loyalty on the first time trip into the battlefield, that's just a great card. Yes. You can't even glory bring her that down straight away. It takes two turns. Bronson on trades with Heart of Kiran, but the, the, any trade is good for, for Hoshide here. Yeah, when you're this far ahead, drawing multiple cards a turn, one-for-ones are great. Flynn really needs like a planar cleansing effect right now. Yeah, and that's how you just feel against these mid-range decks, right? They're just, they just, none of, none of these cards matter. What just matters is the number of cards he has. Yes. And here is finally Glorybringer from Flynn, and it's not even going to be enough. Here's a braid, another a braid before attacks. Dragon's down. Ian's at thirteen. And you watch pace of play here on Naonari's side. He knows he has this, and he's going to have to win game three. And you just have seen him pick it up real fast. Yep. Speaking of picking up, Ian sees it too. He's picking it up. He's picking up the cards, that is. We're going to a third game. Oh, yeah. Flynn was not going to be able to claw back into that one. Yeah. Going to be a quick reshuffle from the players. We're going to go ahead and keep you at the table as the clock is still running for both of them. For Naonari, Hoshide is actually one of our few qualifiers here um, of the big Magic Open qualifiers. These are events over in Japan that feed into the star, the Invitational. He had won that one and has traveled overseas for the event. Already locking his spot in day two, currently going for his sixth win. Yeah, off to a very good start so far. Now for game three, Flynn will be back on the play. He's going to want to stick a Servant of the Conduit. That game's very different if that happens. Game's also potentially significantly different if the Glorybringer comes down on time. Yeah, I mean, it, if it, yeah, if he'd had the Glorybringer immediately on curve, it would have hit the Karn down to one, but it just would have been threatening enough. Yeah. Now, Ryan, with the, I'm what I'm wondering on Ian's side is those thrashing Brontodons. I understand how against red black aggro, it's a good card. A three four four three is very good against Chain Whirler, blowing up heart of Kiran, very good against red decks. After watching that game post board from Hoshide, I don't know how much I like thrashing Brontodon here. That seems like you're playing into the other guy's plan. Yeah, it didn't line up with a lot of what was happening there. It got to make an yeah. exchange. Every well, time, all three did. Yeah. You, you do want creatures that cost two or three because you do need to pressure these planeswalkers. Yep. But do you like it more than a Jade Light Ranger, though, for example? I like most things more than a Jade Light Me Ranger. Me too. Me but, too. Uh, yeah, Jade, Jade, being able to have four power sometimes can be meaningful. Or just, like, drawing lands into your sixes. You know, just, like, going big. Yeah, making sure you draw lands in this deck, definitely pretty important. 
Yeah, it's it's an interesting choice as whether or not Ian, I guess, would want to look at his sideboard plan here. Yeah, it, a card that he's probably off of, he has those four main deck of braids. They line up pretty poorly against most of what's going on. Whereas Brontodon can attack a Planeswalker or destroy an artifact if you really want to destroy an artifact. So it's more sure. flexible. I think it's better in more spots. Yeah, I do feel after that game that if Ian hasn't gone for the Carnage Tyrants, he needs to for this game. Yeah. It feels like he's if he doesn't try to go over the top with a card like that, he's going to lose the mid-range fight. And they're definitely easier to leverage on the play. Absolutely. It's it's nice. So what Ian's sideboard normally is against red decks is he has four Brontodons and three Chandra's Defeats. But with the way Hoshide has sideboarded, how good is even Chandra's Defeat against his deck? There's a lot it doesn't deal with. I mean, the big hit is Chandra herself, but it doesn't deal with Karn. I mean, that, that's actually an issue of just the red-green deck in general. There's a lot of cards here, Struggle to yeah. Survive, Cut to Ribbons, where they line up very well against specific cards, but they just do nothing against other cards. Heart of Kiran, turn two from Hoshide, gets hit by a Braid. Ian passes. I suppose you're right. <laughs> Chandra's Defeat does actually answer Chandra. Yeah. All of them do that. Yeah. I was going to say there's only eight targets, the Chain Whirlers and Phoenixes. I was like, okay, no, no, got to add in those three Chandras. That yeah. text does do that. That is a pretty significant upside. Scrap Heap Scrounger for Nonari. It's going to be a little more difficult to deal with. Ian did have a Chandra's defeat in hand. That's not going to play here. But how about a Brontodon? Not shabby. That'll block or destroy the Scrounger. Yeah, you want to be careful here because I believe Hoshide does have a Goblin Chain Worlder in hand. You okay. Blocking the Scrounger enables the Chain Worlder to just clear, clear that up. A swing. See if Ian calls on it. He does not. Love no blocks there. Yeah, I agree. And by watching Ian's hand, he's going to be in that spot where the fifth land looks like it might matter here. He's got another Brontodon, at least one Chandra's defeat. But he has Glorybringer in his four-card hand, but no land just yet. And that's, this next draw step for Ian is going to be a big pull. Oh, yeah. Goblin Chain Whirler from Host Today, post-combat. No land as Chandra's defeat takes care of the Goblin. And no land is the big thing here. Flynn has some time to breathe now. Ian Host has got a lot of fours and fives. Hits back on three. Ian missed land four and drew Carnage Tyrant. Card I want to see in the matchup, but here's another Brontodon. It's another spot where I feel like Ranger outperforms Brontodon on this board. Sure. Yeah, especially once, once you see this interaction at play, Scrounger plus Chain Whirler, and you don't even want to block with the Brontodon. Yeah. Again, Ian takes a hit of three. I, I, like, I like taking the first hit. I'm not sure how much I like taking the hit again, unless he's actually just planning to race. <laughs> and Ian... Ian, give us a land. He draws a second Glorybringer. Yikes. Swings the Brontodons. One of them will be removed. At this point, I think the, the Carnage Tyrants are irrelevant in Ian's hand because one Glorybringer into another will either win or lose. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nanari, no other plays. He had to cast down a Brontodon. He got two for one himself there as the Scrounger hit the graveyard, and he has missed a land again. Both players missing. And... Hoshide just passes. And here's land five. That could be good enough. Glorybringer. Swing. Nanari just has two of braids. That's not going to take care of the dragon. Or the Brontodon. Let's just no. do nothing. His removal doesn't line up at all. And he takes the full seven. He goes down to seven. All he can do is bring back Scrap Heap Scrounger. And he draws another Rekindling Phoenix. It's another four. That's just not going to be enough. Nope. And with Ian having another Glorybringer in hand, this should send him through. Yeah, this mixture of lands and spells that cost too much mana, it's just not coming together in any kind of meaningful way. Fourth land on time would have made this, take this game very different. So there's a Chandra hanging out there, too. You start casting two spells a turn, maybe even, and you just can't do yeah. anything with this hand. And he sees the right on the wall. He can't answer it, and Hoshide extends the hand. So he drops to five and two. Now, remember, both these players...